Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad to be with us. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. I know we get listeners all the time uh, joining us. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to cover some health topics uh, and talk about things that you might not know about. We cover uh, recent research. We cover research that may not have made it to the public because I want you to know what's going on in healthcare and give you alternatives that might help. I'm not saying stop the treatment that you're getting. I'm saying let's add some stuff to it and let's see what happens. And in most cases, it's very effective and very inexpensive too, which is kind of nice. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start with autism. Now we see, I've seen a lot of patients in my day, and when I first started in practice many 37 years ago, um, we hardly ever saw autistic patients, and now we see them like crazy. And in fact, in the mid-60s, some of us were young then, autism was 1 in 10,000. By 2012, it was 1 in 88. Uh, By 2016, 1 in 68. And right now, we're looking at autism rates of 1 in 44 children among 8-year-olds. One in 44 children are diagnosed on the autistic spectrum. Now, there's different levels of autism. That's called the spectrum. So in California, it's actually the highest, which I find interesting because California is more uh, holistically oriented, but I'll get to that in a second. One in 26 among eight-year-olds in California is diagnosed with autism. That's crazy. Missouri is the lowest, which is one in 60, which is, I don't know why that is. But U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a dramatic uptick is part, in part due to more comprehensive identification and diagnosis. I agree with that 100%. If, when I studied orthopedics, my teacher, um, Rick Ackerman, said, if you don't know it exists, you can't diagnose it. So now we're looking for autism. We're looking for different things. We have better ways to diagnose it, absolutely. However, I don't think that we can go from 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 44 just because we're better at diagnostics. One in 40 children were not autistic in the 1980s with or without a diagnosis. So I'm not by, yes, I think it has a lot to do with it, but I don't think it went from 10, one in 10,000 to one in 44. So let's talk about the research that's out there. Now, why is this important? Because it's important to you too. Even if you don't have autism, what we're finding is things that you're doing or you're exposing yourself to, can be altering the function of the cells. And even though it might not get you on the autistic spectrum, it's adversely affecting your cells as well. And some surprising things here. Uh, October 2020, Scientific Review in the Journal of uh, uh, Seminars in Pediatric Neurology. Several lines of evidence indicate mitochondria in the pathophysiology of the autistic spectrum disorder. Mitochondria, the part of your cells, And in the cell, it has this mitochondria. And the mitochondria generates energy. So it takes in fuel and it does what's called electron transport. And it goes through this process and it actually generates essential electricity for that cell to work. So as the mitochondria start to malfunction, the cells start to malfunction. So autism for years, we believed was genetics. And if you listen to our show last week, we talked a lot about genetics. But empirical evidence shows They've proven that genetic predispositions are actually very small, and they play a small role. So what we thought was genetics, oops, we were wrong. More recent looking into it, they found the mitochondrial biomarkers and electron transport chain activity suggest mitochondrial abnormalities may be involved in as many as 80% of the cases. So here we have something that 80% of children with autism have this dysfunction in the mitochondria, this energy producer in the cell, when patients without autism don't have it. So it looks pretty clear that one of the smoking guns is the mitochondria. In a second, I'm going to tell you why the mitochondria can malfunction, things that can cause it. This affects you. Autistic or not, your mitochondria have to produce energy. And if you're doing the things we're going to talk about, it's adversely affecting the energy. The little, little energy packets in your cells can't do their job. And you're going to be fascinated at what some of this stuff is. So, so the authors of this study point to novel abnormalities in mitochondrial function have been found in autistic children. Some of the things that help. See, that's the good news. We jump right into what can help. L-carnitine, which is a supplement, and also a healthy diet. Wow. There it is, folks. Almost every show we do, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, asthma, uh, now we're doing autism. Dietary changes, even if there's alteration on a genetic level, we talked about this last week, can have a positive impact. We talked last week about prostate cancer. 
And in just three months of eating well, moderate exercise, not hitting a gym, you know, for four or five hours a day, change was, I forget how many hundreds of what's called biomarkers for prostate cancer patients. Three months is all it took to see a dramatic change at the genetic level. So with autism or your mitochondria, dramatic changes can occur in a very, very short period of time. The authors say that it's remarkably interesting because mitochondria are very vulnerable to environmental factors. So what you're exposing yourself to, not just what you eat, but your environment can have a direct impact on your mitochondria. Some of our environmental triggering, mit- triggering the mitochondrial dysfunction, uh, it, we're exposing our children to it that we were never exposed to. We weren't exposed to air fresheners and, and uh, uh, perfumes and hairsprays and dyes and chemicals and soap and uh, electro, electromagnetic fields. So when we were kids, we didn't have all this, and now we do. Now, I grew up in New Jersey, and I grew up in a place called Cancer Alley. Why? Because there were so many chemical factories, and there was no zoning because, you know, my town is 200, whatever, 200 years old, maybe 180 years old. And so they, there was no zoning. You put a chemical factory and then a house and then a pizza parlor and then a, a, another house. And so we literally grew up uh, around next to chemical factories. Now, a lot of those chemical factories have since been shut down. Some of the land has been declared unusable. And yet we were kids and we played there. Now, I've had a lot of people in my life, in my high school, and my people I knew, my family, die of cancer. I didn't. I have no cancer. I got out. I changed my diet. Um, But it's still called Cancer Alley. And the reason was, too, we had so many pediatric cases of cancer. What was the difference between Cancer Alley and two towns over? The chemical factories. Environmental toxicities that we were exposing ourselves to. We didn't know. I remember the smell. Oh, it smells like Sun Chemical today. Oh, it smells like the meadows are burning. Oh, it's, we'd had different smells. We'd be able to tell you where the toxic chemicals were coming from. We didn't know they were toxic. We just thought it was the smell of the factory. Smell of the toxic waste burning in the, 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 the swamps of Jersey, as Bruce Springsteen called them. So children with autism, back to that again, I digress. It's rooted in mitochondrial dysfunction And there are certain symptoms that occur when your mitochondria, the energy packets in your cell, start to malfunction. Fatigue, gastrointestinal disorder, seizures, epilepsy, motor delay, uh, muscle weakness, inability to move properly, unusual neurodevelopment regression. And that's common, uh, oftentimes associated with the autism spectrum disorder. And so the nervous system just isn't working like it's supposed to, and the nervous system doesn't respond like it's supposed to. If you've been around people with autism, many times they're very jumpy. And that's part of this neurological disorder that occurs with autism because the, the mitochondria, part of it, is not working as well as it should. The mitochondria actually become overactive, and that can become a big issue. So we need to normalize. That's the key. We don't want to stimulate or suppress. We want to normalize your health. Like the, you can have a condition of uh, autoimmune disease, and that's one of the things that pops up, uh, risk of autoimmunity in autistic patients. And in autoimmunity, the immune system's acting too much. It's overactive. So we don't want to you don't want to overexcite it more. We want to normalize it. And that's what we want. We want a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. Those are the pillars of all health. If you're looking to continue a healthcare regime or start a healthcare regime, you have to have those three things. Because I've seen these holistic clinics and I've spoken to holistic doctors and they want to do coffee enemas and supplements and IV injections and all that might be great. But they leave the nutrition out or they leave the nervous system out. You're not going to get all the results that you possibly can unless you get the nervous system, digestive system, and diet working the best it possibly can. And here we are seeing it with autism as well. So we talked about supplements. L-carnitine is great. Low carb diet. When I say carbs, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, okay. We're talking about breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. One of the challenges we have raising children, God knows, is that your kids like junk food. And if you ever watch any TV shows with kids, what do they, you know, they have cereals and candies and cookies and make your own candies. And it's that's what kids are being taught. And then when you give them the sweets, it stimulates the dopamine receptor sites in their brain. Dopamine is released. It activates the receptor sites. And the kids are getting high. Guess what? Just like adults. And they have trouble. I was going to say kids have trouble making rational decisions. Well, most adults do too. And so they just want to get high. It's really hard to convince a kid 
that candy is bad for your nucleus acubens in your brain. They don't care. They want to get high from it. And they saw it on TV. And so it's really it's a challenge. So keeping the kids on a low carb diet is low bad carb diet is can be really helpful. So in cases with the autistic spectrum, it is actually caused by mitochondria dysfunction. Supplements can be important because it helps the mitochondria start to work again. The good news, supplements are usually very safe and well tolerated. In the healthcare field, we always like that word well tolerated. How did the patient do after the chiropractic adjustment? They tolerated the adjustment well. How did they do after their surgery? How did they do after their medical treatment, their physical therapy, their drugs? If they didn't tolerate it well, then we try to look for another option. Now, if patients have come to me over the years and say, Dr. Joe, I don't want you to crack my neck as a chiropractor. I don't want you cracking my neck. Well, first of all, we don't crack necks. We adjust necks. There's a big difference. And if you don't tolerate that style of adjustment well, let's use a different style of adjustment. We can do activator. We can do traction. We can do drop work. There's about 32 major chiropractic techniques. Toughness. I mean, there's one of my doctors, that I, well, a friend of mine who does toughness, which is barely touching the patient. So there's multiple techniques that we can use on a patient to find out what they tolerate best. The good news about a good diet and supplementation is most people tolerate it very well. Virtually no risk in terms of adverse side effects. So why not do it? That's my argument that I have. I had a patient come in the other day, young girl, looked very healthy, and she had horrible ADD, could not focus. And so we talked and we did, they did blood work on her. Her iron was low. Her vitamin D was low. And I said, all right, let's get you on some vitamin D supplements. Let's get you on some iron. I said, are you taking the supplements we recommended? No. Did we recommend them to you? Yes. Okay. So if you don't take them, they don't work. Very well tolerated. Just couldn't do it. I said, put it on your kitchen counter. You have to see it every day and do it for 11 days straight. It becomes a habit. That's pretty much how the brain works. So supplements that might help with mitochondrial dysfunction, not just in autistic patients, but everybody. B-complex. We talked about L-carnitine, uh, vitamin C, zinc, vitamin E, uh, glutathione. Glutathione is the master one of, uh, because it helps so many different things. Coenzyme Q10. Now, a lot of supplements, if you have a kid, they may not swallow pills. You can either open up the capsule and just sprinkle it on their food because most of these things have no flavor or grind it up. Put it in a coffee grinder. If it's a tablet, Put it in a coffee grinder, grind it up into a powder, and then put it on their food. What I do that works real well, and I recommend it for other people too, is you can take super greens and essential source, which by the way is the minimum supplements everybody should be taking. A lot of the things we talked about, the zinc, the vitamin E, uh, the, the coenzyme uh, Q10, the, the B vitamins, it's all in the essential source. It's one place, a one-stop shop. So you can get these super greens, the essential source, get some frozen fruit, bananas work well, berries, whip it up into a smoothie, if they won't take a pill or you can't take a pill, just sprinkle the, the supplements right into your smoothie and have that every day. Amazing. I cannot imagine not taking supplementation every day. Knowing what I know. Some folks say I'm pretty smart. Knowing what I know, I couldn't imagine not taking supplements. If there was a better way to obtain and maintain good health, I would be doing it. Chiropractic care, vital to normally functioning bodies. The nervous system controls everything. And if bones move out of place, it creates swelling, it pinches nerves. You might have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, uh, blurred vision, uh, cold hands, cold feet. So chiropractic care in many cases opens up the nerve and blood supply. So that's vital for normal function. Also, if bones are out of place, they rub up against each other and they wear out. That's called osteoarthritis. Another reason why it's so important to keep the spine and all the joints lined up properly. So if you have a health issue, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, nutrition concerns, a specific disease, we don't treat disease. We treat the body so it gets healthy. I know it sounds like semantics. So we can get do look at your diet, look at your digestive system, make some recommendations to try to get your body working normally again. So if you'd like to make an appointment, and I think you should, by the way, drjoe.com is our website, drjoe.com, real simple. You can book it right online. You can call us. The little bot pops up. You can send us a message. Hey, I want to make an appointment. Um, whatever works best for you. It's a very user-friendly website. We want to make it as easy and effective as possible for you. Normally, the exam, the x-rays, the consultation, the first adjustment, a complete nutrition evaluation, uh, uh, going over all our findings with you, normally that's $720. We've reduced that to 375. All of that, that's like 
half price, more than half price. So you get an amazing deal to try to find out what you need to do to get well and stay well. And then we'll put together a treatment plan for you from there. Uh, we accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. Uh, somebody sent me an email the other day, said, Dr. Joe is a liar. And it said, uh, you lie because you say that if you're in an accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. Well, that's not true. So I didn't argue. I've learned. Don't argue. Um, I said, well, I have, you know, eight, I thought to myself, eight degrees, 23 certifications, been in practice 35 years. I teach other, 37 years. I teach other doctors how to deal with car accidents. And it's approved by, all the, by most state boards um, to be uh, continuing education. So in my experience, my 37, 38 years of seeing patients, I've never seen a car accident where the car was damaged and the occupants weren't. Should that ever happen, I will retract that statement. But to this point, and I've seen thousands and thousands of car accidents. I consult with other doctors on car accidents. I've never seen it where the people weren't damaged because 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. That ties in to the autism. Because the nervous system is already compromised. The mitochondria isn't working. The cells aren't working. It's vital that we get the nerve supply working the best we possibly can. So if you'd like to make an appointment, I think you should. DrJoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Uh, we'd love to be your doctors. So if you have any questions, send it through the website. Call us. Book the appointment. Just, just do it. Stop wasting time. Every day that goes by, your health is being compromised more and more. So drjoe.com, you can book it right there. Again, any questions, let us know. So we're talking today about autism and what may be actually causing the autism and what we can do, A, if we're diagnosed with it, but not just autism. The cell function is what we're talking about here, what you can do to get that cell function working. So previous research suggests that autism uh, spectrum may have an autoimmune component. Now, autoimmunity is when the body attacks itself. This was in a 2009 paper, Autoimmunity and Autism. Increased evidence of autoimmune phenomena in individuals with autism could represent the presence of altered and inappropriate immune responses in this disorder. This immune system dysfunction may represent targets for treatment. So now, one, again, I don't want to treat the symptoms. I want to treat the cause. So let's assume that we all want our mitochondria and our cells working the best we can. Go to the dietary changes that I've been recommending to you forever. Cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Is it hard to do? Yes. It is hard to do. I like those things. Haven't had them in a long time, but doesn't mean I don't like them. Cut out the bad foods. Eat the good foods. If you don't know what to eat, go to our website, drjoe.com. Type in the words, the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Listen to that. It's only about 45 minutes or an hour. Then listen to another show we did called So What Can I Eat? Type that in the search bar. So What Can I Eat? Listen to that show as well. There's your first class in eating healthy. Nutrition 101. What to eat, what not to eat. Minimum supplements, again, super greens an essential source. Absolutely. Vitamin D, so important for stabilizing the immune system. I take five drops a day. I just mix it in with my super greens and essential source. Shake it up and drink it. Nitric oxide, uh, I was just talking uh, before I came on the air, I was talking to one of my doctors and she said she tested herself for nitric oxide and she had almost none. So she's taking the nitric oxide now and she's feeling great. Now she's worked with me for a while and we have test strips that we can actually test your nitric oxide with. You put it, you spit on it. It's real simple. It takes seconds to do. It doesn't hurt. And we can test your nitric oxide levels and then we can get you on the supplementation to find out what we need. But with the autoimmunity, the same rules apply. You want to stay away from alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Those are the foods that blow out your immune system. And most people eat it every day. So you're blowing out your immune system. So whatever the, the, the bad guy is, whether it's a virus or a coronavirus or a retrovirus or a rhinovirus or uh, whatever it is, you want to keep that immune system as strong as possible. I'm not saying I have a cure for any disease. I'm saying this is an addition to everything else that we want to do. And there's no harm in doing this. Physician's Creed says what? Above all, do no harm. That's what doctors take an oath. Above all, do no harm. And so we don't want to do harm. We want to get the body. We don't, we only don't want to do harm. We want to get the body working as best we possibly can. And that's what this is all about. Other things that might be impl impl uh, impl implicated in autism. Heavy metals and toxic chemicals. We talked about that earlier, me living in Cancer Alley when I was a child. Lead, mercury, polyvinyl chlorides, organic, uh, organophosphate pesticides. 
most importantly, glyphosate. Glyphosate is an amazing weed killer. You've probably used it. You spray it on your weeds, man, you watch them die. If you inhale that, and I talked about this years ago when it first came out. And again, it was a Dr. Joe was right. We were way ahead of the curve. And now you see on, uh, you know, if you've been exposed to glyphosate and you have this certain type of cancer, call this law firm. You may be entitled to benefits. I knew this was coming. I told you 10, 20 years ago, whatever, whenever it came out, it was coming. And now it's here. Dr. Joe was right. I haven't been wrong a whole lot in my life when it comes to healthcare. So you might want to consider what we're talking about today as being mainstream a couple of years from now. But these chemicals, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, what is that? When you cook meat and that smell comes off the grill, that wonderful smell of meat, those are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Those are carcinogenic. We know they're carcinogenic. Mercury, you get mercury in so many different things. Fillings in your teeth, fish. Another reason you shouldn't eat fish, a lot of fish is contaminated with mercury. And there's other th medications and stuff too you might even get it from. Car exhaust. Holy cow. Has what? Lead in it. So please look at your environment as well, not for just autistic patients, but for your mitochondria and your health. And the biggest one, of course, we talked about is the glyphosate. And a study published in 2019 found women exposed to 11 commonly used pesticides, including glyphosate, during pregnancy had a higher risk of developing, uh, having a child diagnosed with autism. Let's assume I'm wrong. Let's assume just for a second that it's okay to be exposed to lead and mercury and car exhaust and uh, polyvinyl chlorides and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Let's assume I'm wrong and it's okay. Why do it and take that chance? Uh, it's not okay. I'm not wrong. But don't take that chance. Change your lifestyle. It's not hard. Glyphosate, again, is one of the key culprits because it disrupts the gut bacteria. It acts like antibiotics and kills the good bacteria. It impairs the function of the bowels to push food along. It knocks off digestive enzymes to break down food. And that causes a lot of gut inflammation. And if you get this infl inflammation going on in the gut, that can cause some real serious problems. So I don't think autism is one thing. I think it's a multifactorial condition. And it could be named, so many different things like we just talked about can be playing into it. So there's no simple one answer, but there is one treatment. And that treatment is get the nervous system working, get the digestive system working, get your diet straightened out. Then we could do cognitive function. We can do therapies. We can do physical therapy, mental therapy. All that's great, but you got to clean house. And whether it's autism or cancer or heart disease or diabetes or whatever it is, there's no harm in getting a better diet. There's no harm in avoiding toxic chemicals, household cleaners, perfumes, hairsprays, deodorants, and there's no harm in making sure the nervous system is working the best it possibly can. That's the nice part. I can't say no harm. There's a slight risk when you get any treatment. So, But if you'd like to make an appointment, come see us, not just for autism, but for overall health. Go to our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. We would love the opportunity to get those three things working, to discuss your health goals. What is it that you want? That's a great question to ask people. Any relationship, what do you want? How can I make this a better relationship for you? So talk to us. I tell my patients, you know, you don't like one, one of my doctors, see another doctor. You like this style of adjustment, that style of adjustment. Tell us, we'll do what we can. You don't have to do everything at once, but I want you to get on the path. So if you want to order supplements, you can do it right online, drjoe.com. Again, minimally, Super Greens and Essential Source. We have a ton of other ones there. Any questions, send them to me through the website. I'll answer them for you. Follow us on social media at Dr. Joe Esposito. The website, again, drjoe.com.